Hi guys, so today's video is going to be a non-spoiler review for An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson. This is a young adult standalone and it follows our main character named Isabel who is very caught up in the lives of the Fae. She is a mortal herself but she is a master of her craft and craft is just essentially anything that humans, mortals, can do that is sort of in line with creativity. Craft can be kind of a number of things. It can be welding, it can be building, it can be even just cooking, and her craft is painting. And Faye cannot perform craft. They almost view it like the mortal's magic, and they are fascinated by it. And she is the person that is commissioned by the Faye to paint their portraits. And so she has a lot of experience with the Fae. They are very much the kind of Fae you think of when you maybe think more of folklore type Fae where they can't lie, they try to, as payment, give you enchantments that have a twist on them and they like to sort of play games and they live for a long time and they're very reminiscent of that thought of Fae. And so I thought the author did a really fantastic job of making the story accessible and not feeling like you needed to know all of this history of what people think of Faye and things like that. She did a good enough job of not making you feel like you had to know all that information, but if you know even the littlest bit about it, which I don't know that much, so for those of you that do know more about it, it it's kind of fun to see her, her take on it. The story really gets going when Isabel has to do the portrait for the Prince of the Autumn Court. This is a very mysterious Faye that nobody in her town has seen in a very, very long time, and she's very nervous. She gets to know him a little bit, and he seems very unlike a lot of the other Fae. He seems less like a trickster, and he seems more genuine, and he seems kind. However, there is also a little bit of sorrow in him, and she depicts this sorrow in his painting, which she doesn't realize is actually a very big deal and not a good thing for him because when he returns to his court and reveals this painting to everybody, they see this weakness in him now. And it seems like a kind of minor thing, but to the Fae, any sort of weakness is a sign that he is not fit to rule. And so for a mortal who is supposed to be a master of her craft, this thing that is somewhat revered by the Fae, for her to depict that in him, it's an issue. So he thinks she's trying to sabotage him and he forces her to come back to the Fae lands and explain herself, explain that she just painted that in the painting just cause. And so she and him have to sort of embark on this journey back to the Fae lands because it turns out there's a lot more at play than she knew and he has a reputation as weak for a reason. When these two characters go to all these different places, our main character has only really experienced summer. She's never really had the winter court play a role in where she lives. She's not really had the autumn court or the spring court. So every season besides summer is new to her. And when she's going to these places, we get to really be in her head and the descriptions of everything are very masterfully done. I actually think the writing itself is very, very good. It does not feel flowery to me, even though it could most definitely be a case where flowery writing would make sense. I just thought the use of metaphors and similes were done just so, so well, and they never became, in my personal opinion, excessive, and it didn't feel like it was writing pretty for the sake of writing pretty. It so fit the narrative, it fit our character experiencing something for the first time, and I just thought it was really well done. I'm excited to read other things by this author because the writing itself is very nice. And I say that as somebody who prefers a more direct writing style, I just think that this author found a fantastic, fantastic balance of the two. It's just not overdone and it's also not too simplistic and you really feel like you're there. It sounds so beautiful. It made me want to go on Pinterest and just look up pictures of fall during like in certain parts of the world and seeing all the leaves. It just really, the imagery was, was fantastic. That said, there are two things about this story that I think are important for people to know going in so that they don't feel like there is a little bit of bait and switch pulled on them. This story is a little bit of a traveling story and the story is also a love story. And I really want to emphasize that because I think some people went into the story thinking it was going to be different than that and not everybody likes traveling stories and not everybody likes love stories. And to be perfectly honest, I like traveling stories. I don't usually like love stories, but 
regardless of whether you do or don't, I think the writing is really spectacular and I think that the character in the story is likable. I think there are a fair amount of funny moments. I just think there are so many things about this story that are still worth checking out. It's pretty darn short and it's a standalone. So even if you're not a fan of traveling stories and love stories, maybe still give this one a go. Just know that going in so you don't feel like you had something pulled on you. I do also want to talk about the fact that so often nowadays when we read stories, we have been really fortunate that a lot of authors are starting to, to really write love stories out where it doesn't feel like you're watching an action movie and the characters fall in love in the course of one single day and it's really obnoxious and insta-lovey and it's not realistic whatsoever. We've been really spoiled because authors are starting to write romances that take a while and we've got these slow burns that you're just constantly waiting for the characters to be together and all that kind of stuff. And that isn't really this. This is not a slow burn. It's a short book that doesn't have time for that. So there is some development in the relationship I thought that was maybe a little bit glossed over and that maybe for some people, if they had been able to see more of the relationship building, that that would have made it better for them. For me, I didn't really mind because the way that people feel in the initial part of a relationship, that excitement of like, I kind of, I, this person is interesting. I, I kind of am thinking about them and then you can't stop thinking about them. And the character is very aware of that for herself. She thinks like, oh, I'm just one of those foolish girls who's caught up thinking about this person that doesn't matter and I'm stupid for thinking this. And she starts to kind of, I don't wanna say break the fourth wall, but she's aware of her own feelings and the kind of foolishness that that happens when you get swept up in the initial part of a relationship. So I thought the author did a good job of depicting that and it made me like the main character, even though I also usually prefer getting to see the love develop. I think the best way to describe the love story in this is it sort of kind of feels like a Disney movie. It's a, a hint more uh, maybe mature. It's not explicit by any means or anything. It's just there's a couple things that you wouldn't necessarily see in movies that are meant for kids. but. It has that sort of feeling of, of cute. I suppose that's a great way to describe it, but it kind of does. It, it's cute and they butt heads a little bit and they don't always understand the other. One of them is very prideful and then one of them is very practical. And so the two of them together, it just feels sweet. And it doesn't feel like one of those stories where the characters are dealing with the day-to-day -day grind and they're dealing with these catastrophic events and yet they find love in the midst of all of that. It's not one of those stories. It's cute. It's, it's basically a Disney movie for people that are a little older than, you know, 10. I would also say the antagonistic forces in this story feel a little bit Disney also. They aren't super, super well developed. They're not going, nobody's going to pick this book as having like the best villain ever. Without a doubt, I don't think anybody would do that. It is so, so focused on our characters and the atmosphere and them falling in love and those things, those things kind of make up the story and all the politics going on with the courts. I could have dealt with this book becoming a series and then really diving into all those things because I love that kind of stuff, but for people that don't want all that political stuff, you don't really get a ton of it. You get hints of it enough to make the story move along, but you're not getting a really compelling antagonist and you're not going to get extremely compelling politics. You're, you're gonna get the other things I talked about and I think that is fine for a lot of people. Anyway, that is it for my non-spoiler review of An Enchantment of Ravens. This is a story that I can absolutely see why it would not necessarily be for everyone, but hopefully the way in which I described it helps you recognize if it's something that would be fun for you. I really did think it was quite adorable. I thought the romance was cute and I thought that the story was a nice just one and done kind of a story and like I said it feels like a Disney movie. So if you are in the mood to just maybe maybe feel a little happier and pick something up that you can probably read in a couple days or less, I think this is a great read for that. For those of you who have read it, let me know your thoughts on it. And then for those of you who haven't, let me know if it sounds like something that you would want to pick up. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you all later. Bye.